Hi there folks, this is Gus Galloway. I'm finally here transmitting live from AUC. I know some of you were waiting. I'm sorry for the delay. I just wanted to make sure that we were really ready for this. Because again, we have a great treat for you today. We're gonna show you around our campus. It's a beautiful day, it's super windy right now actually. <laughs> uh, and uh, we'll be walking around. So just to give you a little premise, we're going to be showing you uh, the main building uh, which is where I am right now. I'm actually standing right behind it. And I'm going to show you the new building as well. We'll be uh, looking at the, the lecture halls. We'll be looking at some of the labs. And uh, we'll also be talking to a few people from administration. And I want to show you the resources available here on campus, the gym. Uh, again, so many things to show, so many things that I want to share with you. But for now, let me just show you this though. And Hopefully, you can be, your mind can be as blown as mine. So, I know, I know you've probably seen pictures, but it, and seeing from a video, it doesn't do it justice. But if you see, what a magnificent view. And you can see the waves crashing back there too. I don't know if you can see from here, but, uh, but yeah, it's just a beautiful view. And without further ado, you know, let me talk to you a little bit about the history of AUC. Okay, and I'll do it as I'm standing right by the statue. You see the statue behind me. That's Dr. Tien, Dr. Paul Tien's statue. And he's the founder of AUC. If we go back to history, it started, he started the school in, in 1978. So yeah, this is the 40th anniversary. This year is the 40th anniversary since AUC started. And uh, he started the school to provide an opportunity to students. You know, he, he, saw, the, he saw that there was uh, demand. There was interest in students asking uh, uh, about international options, and we were one of the few, one of the first institutions to to do so internationally, while still being affiliated with with the United States in many ways. You know, our clinical sites are in the United States. Uh, many of them are in the United States. We also have the Department of Education uh, has identified our program and our curriculum as being. Uh, as being uh, equal or, or in the same, at the same level as uh, schools in the United States, which means that we also have access to, to a lot of resources. Our students, U.S. citizens, can apply for financial aid, for instance, are eligible to apply for financial aid. And so, yeah, these, these actually started, like I said, back in 1978. We were in a different island back then. Uh, in fact, we were in uh, Montserrat. And from there, we ended up moving to St. Martin. And this is where I'm, uh, where I'm showing you right now. This is actually the island of St. Martin, a beautiful, beautiful place. And I'll talk to you a little bit about St. Martin as well. But for now, let's start uh, doing a little bit of a walk. And hopefully you can hear me. There's a lot of wind. But if you can hear me, you can ask questions. You can start interacting with me. And uh, we, can, we can talk about uh, any questions you may have. I'll, I'll definitely try to answer those. And again, just showing you a little bit of the view from here. Just a beautiful place. And students are getting out of class right now. A lot of them are eating lunch. Uh, it's actually 11, what is it, 11.30 uh, island time. Some of you are watching from Eastern uh, Standard Time, so it's one hour early over there. And then those of you on the West Coast, you're, you're work way early. I don't know if you're still awake watching this, but uh, the video will be uh, left online. You can uh, come and visit and watch the video later on. So there you go. We're actually in the rotunda of the main building. This is kind of our iconic place here on campus. If, if you see beyond those, uh, the double doors over there, that is the, the entrance of the campus. And I'll show you so you can see. And we'll walk around a little bit. So, and again, if you have questions, you can ask, send your questions over and we'll, we'll address them. This is the entrance right here. This is where students come in. And we'll go right over to the gym. I think that's a good place to start, right? Let's do a little workout. 
<laughs> so this is the, uh, one of the areas of the gym where students can do yoga, Zumba classes, they do uh, self-defense uh, uh, courses over here as well. I know that there is a sign you can see at the door actually. Let me walk outside and show you. Should have shown you from before, but this is the right here. You see the different activities. So today is what Thursday. So they have pilots. Yeah, and then they have Zumba at six thirty. Right. Pilates or Pilates. I don't even. I don't know how to say it. <laughs> but so uh, there you see me. <laughs> All right. And we're going right into, this is a section where we have a table tennis, we have foosball. So this is, again, we're starting with kind of a relaxing way of what, what means to be in medical school. Right now, students are not here, which is good. They're probably studying, as they should. And we have some equipment here. And this is the gym area. So if you can see, we have some treadmills if you want to do cardio. Some equipment here for cardio. Some weights. You can do free weights. You can do there are some machines as well. And yeah. So students actually can come here anytime. It's open 24-7. Uh, this is the... Uh, the area we have someone who works here her name is JJ she's not here right now and she's always very helpful very kind and quick to assist uh, again the place is open 24 7 but she is not here 24 7 <laughs> but the place is open 24 7 you can come after class or during the night if necessary after you you know you find a little break to do something yeah the gym is really nice <laughs> thank you Nate I know you missed the gym huh Yeah, so uh, the building is quite, is bustling with activity right now. So we'll continue to show you a little bit more. And the weather, by the way, let me talk to you a little bit about the weather. I know actually in New York, I saw today that in New York, uh, temperature was quite high. It was high, higher than usual. It was in the 70s or something. So that's not far from what you can expect right now here in St. Martin. It's, it's probably about 70 degrees outside, 75 degrees. It's just cool and a cool breeze, very dry. I don't feel any humidity. So it's just kind of giving you a little bit of a, an idea of what, uh, what the weather is like in St. Martin. So we'll walk upstairs and I'll show you some other areas of the campus. So I see some, some of you are uh, Students, some of you were students here, do you see? Or maybe you moved on to clinical sciences. This is great, thank you for joining. So, showing you around a little bit. So this is the view from upstairs, by the way. That's the rotunda. That's where we were a few moments ago. Students just coming out of class, like I said. And this is the wall of honor. I think it's important to show where we come from, how we got here, all the individuals that played a part in making our, our school what, we, what it is today. So uh, I've been fortunate enough to, meet, to actually meet many of the people shown here. I've been with AUC for eight years, by the way, just to give you an idea of, uh, of who I am. I've been at AUC for eight years. I was here even before we had that new building that, that I just showed you across the street. And it's, it's been remarkable to see the growth and the improvements through the years. I know some of you, I don't know if some of you are from, uh, saw the school back in the day, but you'll be surprised of all the things that have changed and for the better. So I'm walking into the library and we have Mauricia and Justina here. Hello. And, and both of these young ladies work really hard to ensure that the library 
is well taken care of. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do? Well, here at the library, we provide uh, printing services. Mm -hmm. Students are able to check books out. Each student automatically has a library account. Mm -hmm. We also offer scanning services. Good. The library also has several uh, study spaces okay. in which the students can also book uh, group study rooms right. online. That can be found on the library webpage. Good. And, uh, so they can get a little quiet time as well? Yes. If they need to study. Somebody's saying hi to you. Adam Bizwanet is saying hi to you. <laughs> so, uh, okay. I'm guessing a former student. Yes, and, hi. How are you doing? And this is Justina. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so Justina, what do you do, what do, you do uh, on a typical day? Um, basically, I check out and check in books. Okay. Um, you help students? Help uh, students yeah. in whatever way. Um, Good. Yeah, ways or even faculty members and staff, we assist them. Thank you. And Very Justina, right. how long have you been with, uh, with AUC? I've been with AUC since 1999. Oh my God. So I've met a lot of <laughs> students, I've yeah. formed a lot of friendship. That's good. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here and yeah. serving our students. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yes, I know. And Marisha, you've been around for how long at AUC? Going in five years. Five years. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you all yeah. for everything you guys do here. Let me just show uh, a little bit of the library. Okay. And this is uh, just an area where you can find your books. And I'm trying to keep it quiet because I don't know if there's anyone studying back there. But yeah, so there are some individuals already studying. This is a quiet area. I was actually doing some work from this uh, room a few moments ago. And it is very comfortable. So we'll keep walking if you have any questions in particular. Thank you. Bye. Bye. So if you have any questions, like I said, you can send them over my way. I'm so proud to be showing you the campus. And I know I did one of these tours not too long ago. But it means a lot for me to come back and do another, another tour. Here are the restrooms, by the way. But it, it means a lot to come back and do another tour, of course. Like I was saying, uh, just this place uh, is, has so many stories, not just my story, but I'm saying in general terms, you know, how many students have gone through here, become physicians, gone on to do something meaningful or to help others and follow their dreams. <clears throat> so it means a lot. I actually know many of the, the students personally as they have gone through the process of uh, enrolling and then all the way to graduation and again so many incredible stories that I could share with you here is the elevator this is a different view of um, of the campus from up here you can see again just the different shades of blue and the back incredible all right so let me go right in one of these rooms. Hello. <laughs> so this is one of the classrooms. See the technology, the opportunity to, uh, the resources to learn. So. This is just one of the classrooms. Again, I, I will show you more. Is there a punching bag at the gym? I'm sorry, sometimes I miss some of the questions because it's bright out here and I can't see a lot of the questions popping on the screen. But yeah, I, there's no, I didn't see a punch bag in there, but I did see one of those mannequins that you can punch. So uh, it's not the same, but you can still punch something. <laughs> All right, so we'll keep walking around. And again, my name is Gus Galloway. I work with the admissions office. I've been to campus so many times. I actually live in the Miami area, but I come to campus a lot. I work from the administrative office in Pembroke Pines, which is our new location for, for, um, for administrative purposes. That's where we collect your applications. That's where we process documents. 
We have all of our advisors housed there. Okay, going downstairs. We're on the main building right now. By the way, this is an ATM where you can get cash. We have an ATM on campus. So if you ever need cash, you can always go to the ATM here. And a lot of the, I'll be showing you the housing area too. A lot of the, uh, the students, AUC students, live nearby. And they walk to, to classes every day. So this is one of the offices I showed as I was walking before. I didn't really stop here, but I wanted to show you this is the business office. Um, so we have financial aid here. I think that's important, right? So let's go in here. Oh, I gotta use my key. All right. Let's see if we can have, this is Renduena's office. She works with the financial aid department. And this is her office. You can see her schedule right here. She's available to talk to you about any questions you have regarding financial aid and questions about how to use your uh, funding for schooling, how to manage your expenses. Renduena is just wonderful help in that regard. So I'm going to go upstairs again from this side because I wanted to show you. I wanted to go and show you some of the support services available here. What other questions do you have for me? Does every student get a, a locker on campus? That's a good question. I mean, I've never heard of uh, students not finding a locker for themselves. So I would imagine that they do have, all of them have lockers. Most of them do. You probably hear the wind. What other questions you have for me? All right, yes, this video will be archived and you can visit it, you can share it. I, I'm guessing it will probably be about an hour just showing you around. So it's not that long of a video. And this is the counseling center right here. So this is just to show you an example of the type of support we provide at AUC. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Fallon is ready for us. Yes, hi. Um, <laughs> I'm Fallon Peterson. I'm the Student Affairs Coordinator. And um, if you'd like to see down the hallway, we have sure. two counselors. Mm -hmm. We have Jerry, Ru uh, Jerry Sathone and mm -hmm. Susan Bruder. Okay, They're that's down there. Okay. Um, we're also starting to work now with a local psychiatrist. Okay. And once a month, starting next week, they'll be here to take appointments. Okay. If you want to make appointments, you can okay. email me, SXM wellness at aucmed.edu. Uh, our Good. hours are 9 to 5. 9 to 5, and okay. And we also take walk-in appointments. Okay. And, Good. And um, if you ever need the crisis line, the phone number is on the back of your student badge. It's 24-7. Great. And something fun we're starting tomorrow, so come visit us in LH2, 7 o'clock. Okay. It's called Movies and Medicine. And come have a discussion with us after we watch this nice film. Good, good. Thank you, Fallon. I know this is a very, a very important resource. Yes, and this is where all the wellness counselors are. It is a very important resource as part of, you know, attending medical school and just in the regular sense, the, the regular sense of personal uh, life and all the things, you know, that revolve around being here. You know, this is an important resource. So, again, thank you. Thank you for taking the time to well, talk to us. All come right. Come see us, whatever you want to talk about. Yes, wonderful. All right, so yeah, we'll keep walking. That is our new building. So the new building was finished a few years ago. I wanna say 2013, the actual year escapes me right now, but it is, it is a new building. 
like I said, when I started working at AUC, that did not exist. We only had like a parking lot in that area. And I just can't stress enough how beautiful the day is, by the way. <laughs> I sound like a kid in a candy store just talking about the weather. And I live in Miami, so the weather is usually nice over there, too. But uh, this is so, the breeze is wonderful with the sea water. The sea, the smell of the sea, the ocean. Okay, so we're getting ready to walk over to the new building. Just to give you a little more information about admissions and, uh, and a little bit more information about what's coming next. I work with the admissions office. My name is Gus Galloway. We actually take applications throughout the year. There's no uh, specific time frame to apply. You do need to follow up with the advisor, of course. When you submit an application, you are contacted by an advisor and they'll, they, they'll walk you through the admissions process. You can also visit our website. There's a lot of information listed there. You can apply for May. 2018 we're taking applications for May so if you're thinking about applying if you're thinking you know what I finishing at graduating now in the next few months uh, I might as well start medical school don't miss a beat I recommend that you do so that way you're feeling fresh with the information you're feeling inspired and you can come and start the program right away in May you can submit applications or go to our website. I'm sorry, it's a little bit windy. You can go to our website and submit an application. As far as requirements are concerned, we uh, require for you to take the MCAT. You need to submit letters of recommendation, one from an academic source uh, and one from a professional source. You need to submit uh, your personal statement, 750 words. There's also no application fee, so you can submit your, your application without the need of having the, uh, a fee or having to worry about a fee. You can submit your application without that. And that is remarkable too. Many of you probably have thought about applying, but you're thinking, oh, you know, I, I need to wait to save money. You can do it and then find out what happens, you know. Might as well do it, right? Also, just showing you around the, the walk. So we're arriving to the new building. And also, you will need to have your degree, your bachelor's degree, to enroll in our program. The, prereq the prerequisites include one year of biology, one year of organic chemistry, all with labs. Okay, we're in the new building. So, from here you can go to the testing center down there. I'm not going to go and show you too much because I don't know if there's anything going on, but we'll, we'll try to get there and see. Uh, I couldn't get any reception down there, so I came outside and now you have me again. And I was just standing here reconnecting and then I, I realized how beautiful this looks. And I know we have staff, maintenance staff and administrative staff and there's so many people who, who make their daily lives here at AUC. And we all have a lot of pride in keeping our campus spotless, as you can see. There's, it's just a, there's a lot of pride, like I said, in keeping our campus beautiful. And there's some staff over there taking a little break. But if you walk, I mean, if you see the video, everything is spotless. It's clean, the bathrooms, everything. I just, I don't know, I thought it's important to point out, since you can't really see a lot from the phone, So let me just keep walking and I'll make a little bit of a turn here. So you can see one of our lecture, the largest uh, lecture hall we have. 
There may be students in there, so I'll be quiet, but I'm just going to show you. So yeah, I just kept quiet in there because I didn't want to interrupt students who were studying. We still don't want to disrupt with the tour. We don't want to disrupt students as they're going about their daily lives. Okay, so we're going to head upstairs. And by the way, we do have a cafeteria and I'm going to show you that as well. It was just very busy in there with students actually getting food so we'll give it a few moments and then I'll head over there what kind of questions do you guys have for me yes later on we're gonna be presenting with a panel I'll be introducing you to current AUC students and uh, also faculty and one alum so you'll get to ask questions we're gonna do that at it's going to be and what is it now two o'clock our time we're going to get started with that. So 2 o'clock is 1 o'clock Eastern. And, and then at uh, 2 o'clock Eastern, we're going to be having the second panel. So one panel will be with students, and the second panel would be with, second panel would be with, uh, with the faculty. Sorry, catching my breath a little bit. Just going up the stairs. <laughs> so... This is the Clinical Skills Simulation Center. Some uh, good timing. Just showing around. Hello. So this is where you can see this is our simulation lab. Uh, going through these doors and exam rooms. I did have a video that I posted some time ago, and the. Uh, the video was about showing you the simulation lab and showing you what the students do in class for the introduction to clinical medicine courses. I recommend that you check out those videos. There's information there that even to me, even though I, was, I have been working with AUC for so many years, there was a lot of new information that I, I was able to gather, particularly the interaction with the simulation man. And by the way, these are some of the offices for faculty. And I want to make sure that you know, kind of understand your way around campus when you, when you come here. So as I was saying, with the simulation rooms, we have, the, we have these mannequins that simulate, as the word implies, they simulate different cases. They can simulate breathing, they can simulate heartbeat, um, but also they can go into emergency situations and the students can practice, can, can practice with these mannequins as they prepare for clinical rotation. So they don't put any lives at risk with these mannequins. However, however, the mannequins actually have reactions as a live person would, would actually have. Again, catching my breath. I need to do a little more cardio. Maybe I should go to those treadmills after this. <laughs> so this is where our faculty is. Hello. I don't want to interrupt any meetings. But this is uh, where our faculty is. It's Dr. Pearson. Is that Dr. S is? I'm not going to be interrupting what they're doing. But it's good. It gives you a perspective of how available they are after class even with the door open. I never really experienced that when I, was, when I was in college. So that is something that I just point out because it is interesting to me. 
So I'm going to go into the dry lab, or try to get into the dry lab. I don't know if there are any students in there. I'll keep quiet now. Actually, yeah, there might be students in there. I did do a video before with uh, showing you the lab, inside the lab area. And it hasn't changed. That's where we have also our cadavers. We have a wet lab and a dry lab. So the dry lab, you have all the equipment and the, the computers. You can do uh, virtual dissections. There's a lot of equipment in there that you can utilize to learn anatomy. And then you have the wet lab with cadavers. And our, our students actually do spend, during their first semester, they spend uh, their hours in doing uh, dissection and learning anatomy directly with cadavers. We have prosected bodies as well. And, we, and then they do dissections too. All right, so wonderful. What else, what other questions do you have for me? Do the students, do the different classes segregate on common basis? For example, make class with September Actually, classes stay with their own group, with their own cohort. So if you start in May, you stay with your May cohort. And if you start in September, you stay with the, with the September cohort. And you can certainly submit applications, by the way, since I'm talking about that, you can submit applications for May or September of 2018. So coming out again into the sun. Let me put my sunglasses, my shades on. So let's go check out the, the cafeteria. But not before we check out the view again. Can I get any likes for that view? <laughs> All right. And so we have students after they finish their lecture classes, they go into labs. Many of them do small study groups. So the, the end doesn't, day, doesn't the, the day, I'm sorry, doesn't end at that point. And uh, beyond that, beyond that, you're going to be able to stay in class or stay, I'm sorry, stay on campus and do your studying. I was testing the Wi-Fi earlier today while I was in the library. Hopefully you can hear me. I know it's windy. So I was testing the Wi-Fi. We had... I, got, I was able to see an average of 70 megabytes. Uh, I know it fluctuates depending on the usage, but that's, that's the Wi-Fi I was getting at that moment. So, all right. And we're going to be talking with faculty about the curriculum. So a lot of the stuff, a lot of the information that you're hearing from me is complementary to that, okay? So you will really get to hear from other, from experts of their individual fields. You'll also hear from students, so they can means to go to AUC. All right, so let's go to the cafeteria. Okay. So we have some students over here. Wherever there is food, there is students, right? So. Good, good. Hello. Hi. Just showing around. <laughs> Is Charles around? Hi. Who takes care of the kitchen? <laughs> Good. Good. So Charles, what do you, what do we have for today for food? Today we had um, fish fingers, grilled chicken and mushroom sauce, and a stuffed mushroom on the side. Ah. One of my favorite sides everybody loved was the fried plantain. So. Oh, the fried plantain. If there's any more left, or it's probably gone left. by now. Probably. <laughs> I'm going to show this food right here. Sorry, Charles, go ahead. So this is something very interesting that we're um, embarking on right now. We're trying to go into the eco-friendly. So guys, I want you to come with your mm -hmm. Tupperware okay. and your mugs and your water bottles and let's start this together. Not only us, but with you as well. Okay. Thank you that's, that's a very good idea. Yeah. Thank you, Charles. Yeah, Absolutely. you got to be more eco-friendly. Thank you. All right, so bye. <laughs> So here's some, some of the food, just showing you around a little bit. 
<laughs> How are you doing? Good, good. good. Doing well. All right. Can I get some likes for that food? <laughs> I'm hungry, actually. And we have some vending machines. Do we need to get some water, coffee? There's coffee over there on the corner. All right, here we are again. Showing you a little bit of what's going on outside. Let me show you another classroom. We'll do a little bit more walking around. I'm getting my, my steps today. I'm meeting my goal for steps. I hope you, uh, you're burning some calories too, just by watching. <laughs> and I'll be going over to the, to the dorm, to the uh, apartments actually. I shouldn't call them dorms because they're actually apartments. So we'll be going over to the apartments. That's the building you see in the back there. Okay. So if you're wondering, okay, how to apply, I see a question related to how, how do you study here? Uh, how do you apply for school here? So what you can do is you go to our website, you start the application from there, make sure you do the, the, the legwork as well from your end to collect all the documents and all the things you need for, to get the application started. Uh, there's a class going on right now. I don't know if you can see, but I'm not gonna go in there. There's class going on. So even if some lectures are done at 11.20, there are still some other lectures going on after that and then the labs, which is what's going on probably in the anatomy lab and I couldn't get in there. It's because there's class going on there. Okay? But like I said, you can also review some of the other videos that we have there. I recommend the simulation lab video, the one about clinical sciences or uh, I'm sorry about the clinical introduction to clinical medicine I recommend that you watch that video and going back again to the application process you submit your application and it doesn't take long for you to get an answer actually it is processed rather quickly oh might as well show you this let me get out of the wind so this is an area where students can study Okay. If you want a little bit of fresh air, you can sit outside, eat some food, and study. So yeah, so as I was saying, the application process is rather efficient. We have some amazing, phenomenal admission staff, and we have individuals working throughout the weekend, sometimes going and visiting different campuses across the country or North America, talking to students, talking to pre-med advisors, talking to parents, to bring you as much information as we can about our program. And the staff on, uh, at the office in Pembroke Pines, they process your application, they help you get uh, com the application completed, and they call you as soon as you submit an application or soon after submitting an application. They call you, they talk to you, they get things. They let you know what you need to do if you're missing anything. And so I was talking about requirements, prerequisites, you know, the, having, the, having the MCAT. So we're going to go into the elevator. Hello. You can come in here. It's okay. You're going up? Yeah. Oh, right. I'm just doing a Facebook Live right now. Oh, cool. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Yeah. Later, <laughs> I figured the internet was going to go. So now, I'm, now that I'm uh, on the third floor of the uh, student apartments, I am getting reception again. Okay. So just showing you, starting with a view again. So we're on the third floor. We're going to walk into one of the apartments. This is where the students live. Okay, so this is the campus, uh, the, camp the campus apartment. So let's go into, this is 305, room 305. So this room is actually, this apartment, this unit is uh, available. It's cool in here, the AC is on.
All right, look at that view. I need some likes for that view. Again, I am just reinforcing the reality of this. So you come to AUC, you go to medical school, you come to your apartment, and you sit outside, you get some coffee. Can you picture yourself doing that? I mean, I know I can, right? Okay, so, so as you can see, it is right rather co cozy. We have, I'll show you the rooms now. So this is one of the rooms. It looks like the room uh, is two beds put together. So you have a little bit more uh, real estate as far as the, the bed is concerned. Then let's go into the kitchen. I mean, not kitchen, I'm sorry, the bathroom. <laughs> uh, walking and talking at the same time. Here's the bathroom, very clean. This is where you would live. <clears throat> now we go to the, well, this is actually, so, sorry, let me show you the, this is the uh, closet. Okay, so you get plenty of room. It's a walk-in closet. So you have racks on this side and some area here. Let's keep doing a walk around. Here's the other bathroom, because this is a double unit. So the unit has specifically two bedrooms, and each bedroom has its private room or a bathroom. So this, this room is a little different than the other one. It only it has a smaller bed. There's a desk for your computer and a closet. So the bathroom, it's kind of chilly in here actually because the, the AC is on and it's really comfortable temperature inside. You get a little area where you can have your breakfast, your food, microwave. I'm just describing everything, <laughs> but I think it's pretty self-explanatory, right? If you see all this stuff here. Go in the fridge. Some water, maybe? No, no water. I was being hopeful because I needed some water. I'll stop by and get water before our next session. And then you have one more closet in the entrance. So, as you can see, it's all furnished, it's ready for, for students to move in. So one of the questions is, do spouses ever live in these apartments or just students? So this is only for students. We don't have spouses staying on campus. So if you, have, if you come with uh, your significant other, uh, other, you wouldn't be staying on, on campus. You would be staying off campus. There are plenty of options off campus as well. And we do have a direct access to many of these units we manage a lot of the off-campus housing units so you can work directly through us and in fact that's what we highly encourage is that you work directly through us you contact your representative and uh, we also have a spouses organization by the way and they can give you some instructions on um, tips ideas if you're coming with kids you can certainly reach out to them and they can give you more information about what they're daily lives look like. There is a school nearby called SIA, uh, which is a Canadian school in fact, and they do, it's actually nearby as so close that it is, it is within walking distance. And so students with, AUC students who come with kids, their kids can go to school there and they meet the requirements for, uh, uh, with the Department of Education. The, it's a Canadian school but it is also uh, compatible if you're going back to the United States for for your kids anyway to go back to the United States so they don't have to miss school while you're uh, here living in St. Martin. Let me show you actually let me go outside and just give you a kind of an overview of what you see back there. So so that is the full island of St. Martin is not very large. I know I was going to mention go, give you some information about St. Martin the island. So the island is 37 square miles. It is rather small when you consider uh, when you consider the fact that there are two countries within 
within this island. We have a French uh, territory, which is Saint Martin, and then we have we have a uh, the Dutch side, which is called Saint Martin. And the language spoken across the island, uh, well, we have two different languages. On the Dutch side, the, the, uh, the language widely spoken is English. And then on the French side, the language widely spoken is French. But you can get around with English pretty much anywhere on the island. If you go to a store, for instance, and I know I have some videos out there where you can see information about the stores. Uh, you basically deal with, uh, with American currency and you, you deal with individuals who speak English. So the, uh, that leads me to that, to that second point, the fact that we actually have access to or you can pay with American money makes it a lot easier. You don't have to exchange currency. You don't have to be tracking that particularly. And when you go to an ATM, you can withdraw cash in American dollars. You can also use euros on the French side. So an interesting fun fact is if you call from the Dutch side to the French side, it is considered a long distance call. <laughs> Even though it is actually sometimes, well, there's no border, so you cross the border easily. But yeah, it would be considered a long distance call. And on the French side, they, uh, French side, they use a different uh, uh, power outlets. They use 210 for energy, and over here yeah, they use 110. So you actually need a converter for, for your electricity if you go and live on the French side. So the Canadian school is called CIA, C-I-A, right? And it's, I think the C stands, it stands for Canada. And international, I think, is the I, but I can't remember. It might be uh, something else. You can probably look it up. Oh, it's Caribbean International Academy. There you go, not Canadian. Caribbean International Academy. I, I see, I'm getting some help in the comments. All right, so what else can I tell you about St. Martin? Again, uh, it is, the population here is roughly about 80,000, give and take. You have tourists as well who come. This is a very touristic island. So you have cruise ships that come in different times uh, during the week. And you also have a lot of individuals who come through St. Martin to go to other islands. We're not far from Anguilla, for instance. Anguilla is only a short trip away. You can even catch a ferry to Anguilla from here. There are other islands as well nearby, but Anguilla is kind of the closest one. A lot of people go from here to St. Bart's. It's a famous island too, St. Bartholomew. Okay, do you want to see another side? Someone's asking me to see the other side. So what you see back there, if I'm not mistaken, well, the airport is that way, so flights that come in would be landing toward that direction. And if you go around, you go through the Simpson Bay area, and then there's a bridge that crosses to the front side, and you go to the front side of the screen, where you see that catamaran over there. That is the French side on the opposite side. And this is the Dutch side on this side. If, if you cross, if you go all the way beyond the mountains, it also becomes the French side too. There are, I've done some uh, videos touring around the island. I recommend you check them out as well. There's a lot of information there. Okay. So you want to see the other side of the apartment. Let me close this very well. I don't want the AC to be working for no reason. So let's go to the outside. All right, so this time I'm not gonna get in the elevator so I don't lose you. I'm gonna walk down the stair. So what other questions do you guys have for me? And I know shortly at two o'clock, island time or one o'clock Eastern, we should be starting, I mean, give or take, we're gonna try to make sure that we're ready for you. We're, we're gonna start a panel with students and you can ask questions. I recommend that you check that out. I, you can ask questions the same way you're asking me questions right here and they'll be giving their own perspective 
these are students who are leaders. A lot of them are leaders. They are involved in many activities, so they can, they're familiar with the ins and outs of being an AUC student. So one of the questions is what a single looks like, a uh, single unit. I didn't go into a single unit because there, there was none available, but it looks similar to a double unit, except for the fact that it doesn't have the two rooms, the two bedrooms. Uh, but it has the same furniture, they're furnished, uh, you have a bathroom in there, uh, similar to the ones I just showed now. And it has a kitchen and all that. So they're just a, a little smaller because it doesn't have the two bedrooms, like I said. So you can come right here after class, maybe cook some lunch, get some study in, and then you can also get back to the main building if, you, um, if you're meeting with other students to do some studying. Whatever you are doing, you can utilize uh, the campus at your disposal for different things. The Jordan Village. I'm actually staying at the Jordan Village uh, myself while I'm here in St. Martin. Uh, I have a unit there, uh, which is a student where a student would normally stay. So the Jordan Village uh, is, for all of you uh, listening, it is also was one of the buildings nearby where students stay. There are a lot of, uh, if, you can, if you can imagine, after the hurricane, there is actually a lot uh, of work going, uh, going uh, on right now. And we see that a lot of these buildings are actually under... Uh, they're getting a lot of refurnishing. My, my building where I'm staying right now at Jordan Village, I am pretty comfortable there. It's a studio apartment. So I have a kitchen, I have, I can take pictures and, and post them later, if you would like. Okay. All right, guys. So is there any other particular area you would like to see? I pretty much showed you the, the library, I showed you, I showed, showed you the gym, I showed you some classrooms. I went up to the new building as well. Just giving you a heads up for those of you catching me right now. You can go back and, and review a lot of the, the, the areas that I showed earlier. And you could see some of the students. I went to the cafeteria. I went up in the main building. I showed one of the classrooms in the main building. And I showed classrooms, uh, one of the la classrooms on the, on the new building. Went around showing you some of the offices. Uh, and then we're currently at the student apartments which I was able to show you one of the units, a double unit. Oh, let me talk to you a little bit since uh, I don't know if you wanted to know. Well, you see some cars, so students actually typically buy cars, but uh, it's not necessary. It's not all the time. You can still get around without a car. We have a shuttle. One of the resources available here is that you can take a shuttle from the main entrance, and they'll take you to different places. You can just request uh, a time of pickup as well. And if you are doing groceries, they can take you there, of course. Uh, but also students rent cars. I, I, I think I showed you, but at the, in, the, in the rotunda, there was a table set up with one of the rental car agencies. So what they do is, I just talk to you face to face now. So if you go uh, to the main building, there is actually a desk set up by one of the representatives of one of the car rental agencies. So you can talk to them. You have a lot of vendors that come and offer services to students, whether it is a cell phone company or local uh, catering or, uh, like I said, the rental car. So you can go in there and they can, they can give you a car and you can basically, a lot of students actually do, what they do is they rent a car in groups, so they spend uh, less money. And so you get the car for the weekend and they take advantage of that to drive around, maybe uh, do some groceries or buy other items that they need. And then, uh, like I say, they share the costs. Okay. Okay. So there's some more information for you to review with this video. You can always go back and, and check it out. You can send it. You can share it with parents, other individuals involved in your lives, to uh, to really get an understanding of what it means to come to AUC to work and well to study here and well finish your degree and become a physician. I'm really proud to be able to bring this video to you uh, from St. Martin. 
Uh, what other questions? I think someone's asking about the cars. So uh, you don't necessarily have to buy a car, like I said, but students do buy cars from other individuals who are leaving. So you can have a car for the time that you're here, and then when you leave, you can sell that car again, and you can make some of the money back. So some students do that. It's not necessarily uh, the, the one way to do it, but it is something that students actually do. All right, so again, let's just, I'll, I'll bring back the video with the uh, students shortly. So I hope to see you there. And thank you for everything, guys. Bye.